Hey, Louise. Very good. Hey, you? We're back. We're recording. Uh, cool. So this is the 20 minute calls. Um, we're going to set the time. We're going to keep to them as much as possible. I know the first one went to 32 minutes. Um, and for people watching this, there's three fold to this. Is one that that Lulu is calling himself on a thing is going to get amazing value and real clarity on the challenges it's got at the moment. Um, from an audience perspective, you're going to get a real insight into you know, a real context regular element of content that's not out there that's unrivaled. So you're actually seeing a live, in live session, if you like, of working through someone's challenges. And hopefully you'll be able to take away from that that's a challenge for your own business. Um, and the first scale, what's in it for me is that you'll see exactly how I work, how I work. So if you want to get an idea of what it's like to work with me, this is the truest sense of it. There's no sales pitch in here. There's nothing there's there's nothing in it there's not any links below anything like to work me and things like that if you want to dm me with your challenges or book the call because thanks to luna we're still going to book a link on this if you book your own 20 minute call and um we'll see you on the next one so lou 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 yes. just quickly how would you one very very short thing how would you just and uh, introduce yourself uh so recently i've discovered finally found the niche bit that's uh, always been a challenge for me because I've tried to be earthbound by it. But I'm an interdimensional healer. So I uh, bring into earth, if you like, I earth uh, the untangible, which has been interesting in and of itself. So generally that's for clients. Perfect. And people that may not know you, and I know you very well, but it's, um, you know, what a beautiful soul you are. And I think that <laughs> some people might go, oh, that's just a, I think some people might look and go, well, that's a, dare say, woo woo, so, you know, mm -hmm. kind of thing. People get to know you, get to know that's exactly what you do. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> you're divine um, and connected to the divine, which is amazing. So, Let's get straight into your challenges then. So you put on the ball that um, updating your website, is your yep. website challenges, clarity on marketing in terms of how often, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we're going to tackle the first one around. Where, where's your website at the moment in terms of? Oh, it's it's a shambles. It's the, it's the best way to describe it. It's a... Uh... In a past life, when I was working with somebody, um, I was, uh, I suppose, like a PA. So I'd do like all the admin, I'd do the back end of her website, um, do her bookkeeping, answer the phones. I mean, all of those kind of things. And uh, um, so I think to myself, I should know how to do my own website. But then I just look at it and it's like, I can't, I need to, I don't want it to look like this. It needs to look like this. And although I can update content when it comes to the layout and everything else, it just, it, I just spend too long doing it. So it's like, do I, is it just going to be better for me to just sign it off and say, not in my need to do agenda. It's something I need to outsource. And just so long as I know what I want it to look like and let them know, um, and then what's the most productive way for a website that should look now? Because obviously my knowledge of it is will be quite outdated. Mm. It's sort of over 15 years since I was doing. Yeah. And it's also so the thing with that as well is if you look at like a purpose of a website 15 years ago, it's completely different. Yeah. In the in the online world to now. Mm um you know and and the stats will show that that if you look at the b2c and b2b business websites the, the amount of traffic is way way down on, on always on a declining thing over the years you'll always have online traffic is more but you always have like the likes of amazon sites google and all that going higher and higher and stuff like that but in terms of like a website like mine and, and your website so will always have quite low traffic mm -hmm. um the difference being and the difference from 15 years ago where people you know it was a new thing go to a website and 
get everything they can from the website. The way people use websites now for working with you, working with me, is one go to your website probably just if anything, just probably maybe confirm something like that for them. Mm. But it's just take some sort of action. So either they're gonna book a call or get a freebie or something like that, you know, download a thing like that, watch a video uh, you've got on there if you've put it to it. So in essence, the which is good because one of your challenges around the website is my question is really is that's as you said, as a future thing that you can put that in your future to have a website. Uh, mm -hmm. My website was still not happy. I don't think I'll ever be happy with my website, but <laughs> professors, but the I'm a tinker with it. But the reality is, I had a couple of years ago, which I had a really poor website and I wasn't bothered by it at the time. It's okay now and it's, you know, but it's not perfect in my eyes and in change way. But it's it's nice, sleek, it's simple, which is what I want it to be. But the reality I had a couple of years ago was that my clients are not coming through my website. And if you're going to have a website, it's then it's not just build it and they will come. It's then the elements of if you're going to drive clients through your website and people want to look at this go oh i get clients on my website or somewhere but, but mm -hmm. point, they've come through somewhere like social media first and then gone there to take action was that you know so it's kind yeah. of if you like confirms what i'm saying but also some websites where people do get traffic you know coming from google and stuff like that it's where there's really good seo and sometimes just but done by accident normally a big cost in that in terms of continuous seo on it and ranking and all that sort of stuff that's the search engine optimization isn't it yes SEO. Yeah. yeah and um and the reality is at the moment that's do you need that to get clients okay because there's fine you saying the word outsourcing you know how scary i get about people just saying i'll outsource it because i it's there's a skill in outsourcing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've done the training. We'll talk about 10, 80, 10, which yeah. we won't go into big deal because we want to keep this to 20 minutes. But, um, you know, so the 10% up front of you setting out what you want it, what you want it to look like, what you want on it, what you want it to deliver, all of these things. 80% of you let go and let someone go and do it. And then 10% reviewing it and titillating it. And mm -hmm. uh, that's a word. Um, and that's actually a very skill skill set in itself being able to do that and not get involved in it and mm. most people outsource and go well i want a website i'll you know who can do me a website and then they'll make the decisions maybe on cost on price rather than anything else and then they get a website that they don't like and there's probably a lot of coaches that are watching this that have spent probably a couple of grand on a website and then go i don't know i hate it yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't even direct anyone because they've got um, mm. they're, they're kind of scared to send people there because they'll send the wrong message and all that. Yeah. So for me, for you, I think the the to simplify it in terms of an action plan coming out of this is, I don't think you need a website because I mean, where where your where where do you think your clients are going to come from at the moment? In terms, of where do you think they're going to come from? They're going to come from all of my clients have always come from referrals. Right. Okay. It's always been a like a word of mouth or if they've uh like in person seen me. No. General as a yeah. general census. It's and then so how do they how do they I'm trying to say this, but I know the answer, but I want you to tell me. Um <laughs> the how do they get in so someone says, Oh yeah, right, I'll introduce you to Lou, you know, this is absolutely fantastic. What, what's that point of contact look like then from you? How do they then get in front of you? Um, so the the person that's referring will either uh, send me an email or send their friend an email with me copied in hmm. or Messenger or a t uh, I've had text messages, WhatsApp messages. So they've, I mean, they actually know me and they're getting yeah. directly to me. It's not yeah. a third party. So again, it's almost 
negate the website because they'll probably go and look for you on socials wherever they're kind of their favorite social mm. is instagram wherever like that and even then so should i would it be best for me to just have a like a landing page as opposed to there's there's two things i think you could have because i think the, the power referrals obviously goes a lot further than what, looking at anyone's social profile or anything mm. like that whatever. but the they may well go and get something free so someone might land on my social if you like and then put a referral and then download one of my lead hooks if you like but i think for you either a, a very basic landing site mm -hmm. and i mean an incredibly basic landing site yeah right um and and when i say really basic i mean like even if it's just a video of you introducing yourself and then say and then a, like a call right underneath book a call right say book a zoom call or and or a a simple pdf that you put so all these moments where you to understand about what you want it to look like and maybe get the things you want to say it's just having a, a simple pdf you should do in in word doc you know and then send it as a pdf mm -hmm. which you know kind of goes through how you work you know what you've got available in terms of programs or how you, people can work with you at the moment who's best suited um we will have a I remember the templates in the programs. I know you're in the program. I think the template, the template is going to go on the Trello board that you're going to get access to soon, actually, of uh, that PDF anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but having but a simple PDF, really, and you can do that on Canva or, or Google yeah. Docs, you know, so you can make it look pretty real. But actually, keeping it really simple in that sense, and and I think that so that's that's all you need at this stage. Perfect. Okay. Now, once you get three, four, five referrals and all that, and it's come in, then you can go right. And again, one of the future things I want to do is a website and start putting a little bit away each time. Every time a client comes, you know, you get a paying line. It's like, well, put 10% of that towards your website budget. Right. So have a website budget. It might say, right, actually, I want to, when I want a website, I want a really, I want it all singing, all dancing, proper website that's going to live, be able to last for the next five, 10 years. Right? Yeah. So in that essence, work out your thing, what, what you'd be happy to spend on a website. It might be 3,000 pounds, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Every time you get a client, go like 10% of that's going to go to my website fund, whatever. And then it's, it will be a future thing. So when you get to 100% on that, then go right now. I've got the money. I'm going to get website, and you'll be more. You'll have a lot more of understanding then about who your website's got to talk to as well. Okay. So most people at the moment go, "I need a website. I need a website." And if you think, uh, I think it's actually a thing where you don't need a website, just a simple landing page or PDF, where it's much more effective and. Because yeah, websites always need updating. They'll always need updating, you know, and stuff like that. And, and then you'll come across other issues like... Because mm. it used to be like your business like, card, didn't it? Yeah. So like websites now because people are online. Yeah. And some industries are still important. So, for example, if you're a local gardener or something like that, then, you know, local solicitor, lovely, you're, you know, you're very localised um, audience and client base then a website is key you know um mm -hmm. and but having a website a purpose of right my website's not just if my website is just which most websites are and coaching websites and any coaches watching this you know look at your website if it's just a brochure website in terms of it looks like it's a fancy brochure just on the on the web right <laughs> then then you can do that with a with a pdf brochure you know you can do that with a and arguably if you send someone a pdf to look at your how they can work with you and there's a brochure of mm -hmm. you know your services they're going to get more from that than they are going oh here's a website address go and look at a website address okay because your website address can it's got to be geared towards you either give it towards people landing on it first of all so people so for me, my website at the moment is people geared about, they've heard me from somewhere, they don't know me. So when they land on my website, it's driving them to the, at the moment, 
this might change obviously depending on where people are watching this in the time but the moment is lending them to the guaranteed success formula nine minute video so they're getting that and you know it's driving them to that value it's not driving my website is not driving someone to become a, a paid client as soon as they land on my website mm. so they're completely doing different things so the people that are where we're having conversations they refer to me and we're having conversations about becoming a client i still do that through a pdf i still do that you know so i just okay. like a messaging conversation and a pdf rather than go to my website so uh, they're okay. overrated if you like in that sense i'll stop stressing about that then marvelous <laughs> but, it's just, but it's a future thing that you would love to have a website you know and um mm. you know and because obviously I've got one. I've got well, I've got two. You've got Northern Synergy one, haven't you? You put it on the Yeah. So yeah. that's but that's um so I was due to start that up again and unfortunately the guy who has access to it is mm. has been seriously in it ill. Yeah. So I've got no and now I can't access it. And that is very common by the way. Yeah. So so, so what I've done is because I know a little bit myself, I've dumped a landing page tagged it onto the end of my louisa north website yeah. and, directed just as, and directed the northern synergy website to that because i own the i yeah. have control the only thing i've never let go of is the domain name yeah i've kept that and which and that and you've got knowledge of that so if you haven't got no knowledge of it, this coach watching has got no knowledge of it then you can get in a whole world of him where you haven't got yeah. access to your website you know you might use a you might use a company to do your website. They they do all the access and all that stuff, um, and then you can't get access to it anymore. You know that company's mm. gone or whatever. You know and been bought out, or they only decided it's not for him, um, and you can't get access to that mm. website. You know, I did. You know, when I had used to have the agency with the websites we've done, we very much on the the first agency when it closed it down. Well, sold it on. There's part of closing down and part of sending it on. But the made sure one of my things at the time was made sure that the clients we had websites, we, you know, so gave them like, here's all your access codes, here's all your things, you know. Yeah. Um a lot there was some stuff that we had in our name that I, you know, that we transferred over to them, that et cetera, et cetera, you know, so um all the costs, you know, dot I's were dotted mm. and create T's of cost in that sense. So that is a quite a common one. So again, it's not worth the stress over at the moment. It really isn't. Mm. It's just a future no. thing. We can really sit down and got time and so a nice have at some point. Yeah, yeah. And it's not just you sitting down with a website designer. I think the best thing you know where I've consulted with clients before in the past is sitting there with them and they when they're getting a new website done. You know mm. with that website. So yeah, there's a lot to, more to that and and there is a skill in outsourcing as well. Yeah. So, um, it's not, it's just not bigger. Yeah. I would say mm-hmm. a lot of your clients, if people coach watching this, your clients coming in for you, your clients coming through referrals, the website's irrelevant. Mm. Okay. That's that one ticks off. Tick. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the other one is the clarity around marketing. So my, uh, it's taken me long enough to do my sharing of what I, want to be doing and cool stuff so uh the one i want to get out at the moment is uh the dream compass so i'm doing dream compass and the divine receivership program um but the divine compass is easy i mean it's a 45 minute uh 20 minute yeah. half an hour it's uh 45 pounds it's uh it give it will give you mental clarity and it answers it'll using your dreams it answers any question you have any yeah. pressing question you have about anything in life right now. So how are you, how are you going to market that then? Uh, that's kind of what I'm asking about. So currently it's uh, just, yeah, in uh, Facebook, I've just been, I've put some, a couple of little template things together. Um, it, yeah. So it's kind of, that's where I'm, that's, yeah, help. So, <laughs> With that, and I think your divine um, is because it's it's more of an intensive, isn't it? Um, yeah, that's the ninety day intensive. Yeah, so it's obviously a different level of showing 
your your true self and all that. But I think with both of them is I would always do it on a monthly basis where right, so with a dream compass, you've got real clarity on it. Mm-hmm. Question is, if someone just reading that, would they understand what it is? Um, and I know you talk about unraveling your dreams with it and and getting clarity on it um, from a mental point of view. So it might be that I think for each of those, each of your things, you write down an action for you would be that the five things that are part of the journey you go through. Even though it's a 20 minute, 30 minute call, there'll still be a journey you take them through on that call, isn't there? Yes. So I would divide for you, divide up the, what is that journey? And the difference between the divine receivership and the dream compass would be there'd be a lot more smaller steps on the dream compass because it's a smaller mm-hmm. time frame, if you like. So the 90 day one probably have a long list, but you could do it in maybe seven day increments. Like this is what, seven days, 14 days, whatever. Um, and, and then that becomes your content. I think for you, either doing short, either short videos or short text, you know, written post around each step Mm -hmm. and you're not gonna people are gonna read it and not gonna complete it because it's all contextual so they might be reading step three before they've even read step one for example yeah so for you as well the call to action around it as well is this is well this is step three of the journey of the dream compass this is what the dream compass is if you're interested just Right, so you can keep it really nice and simple like that, mm-hmm. in line with what how you are and who you're being. Um, but each one of them steps is then you do a bit of content around that. Okay. And as you know, you can do you could do reels, you could do written posts, you could do a quote on it. You know, you could do a separate, if you like, kind of you use Instagram a lot, don't you? So mm-hmm. you could do your carousels on the steps as well. So that would be one post where you're talking about all the steps on a carousel post images, which you could do on Canva, which you'd be able to do really cool on manager and and then separate posts on each each step of that journey of you know what's a, a talking about and not talking about this is exactly what we do and how you know how we do it. So you're not doing the session, but what you're doing is you're just saying, right, this is this is what and why in this step we're gonna this is what 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 this step is why we do this step and then as we talked about before you know in the program is, is then how to is is the bit that people charge for mm-hmm. both of these it's great because you i think you can reveal more about what's involved in these programs rather more than what actually a lot of other coaches can because i think for you what well, no one they might have all the information of the divine um receivership program right we might have the whole in every nook and cranny of it everything about it right they still can't do it without you no all right dream compass they can't do without you and if someone sees you and works with you and even just talk to you they'll understand that right so <laughs> that might be if you're watching this and you really enjoy getting you know get in touch with lou and um because I'll tag you in wherever these are, especially on the Facebook one, not on the YouTube one, but I'll tag you on the um, Facebook one. But the they can't do it without you. So you can share, I think, mean, more of what that process is. Mm-hmm. No one's going to be able to copy it. Um, and even, for, you know, even if you, you're worried about that, is like, being, but you're going to get people knowing this, people that come into this. Someone might, so it might be the buying receivers, it might be, uh, you might end up with 21 parts of the journey, for example, right? Mm-hmm. And um, some might see just 15 and 16 of that, whatever. But the good thing is you've almost got like 21 opportunities there from a marketing sense to attract the person you want to attract. Yeah. And then they'll go and source the other ones out or they'll get in touch. But mm-hmm. each of them, 
you, you can do that and have it explained look this is part of the whole divine receivership 90 day program this is step 15 of, of 21 mm -hmm. steps of part of the journey um if you want to know more you know ask me and i'll send you the pdf about the, <laughs> the thing. so again this is where your yeah. pdf can, can come into it as well because yeah. if you just go just go to the website you're going to have people that go to the website that are making up their own things so, so when people will read it's interesting this would lays back straight to your first challenge because if people go to a website they're making up their own mind if you like around answering their own questions which reality is if you're going to a web, someone's website to I'm just try and understand something because you, you're looking for their support and guidance. Mm -hmm. You ain't going to ask yourself the right questions without them sitting in front of you anyway. No. Right. So having that, having a PDF or landing page where you can send people to would be a much better journey for them as well, as well as easy for mm -hmm. you. Okay. When they say, yeah, can I have the PDF, the whole details in, it allows you to get in a conversation with them about you know, understand where they're at and and be available for any questions that they will have. Whereas you wouldn't have that on a website. Cool. Okay. Brilliant. And I think you asked one about how often in your thing, right? Yes. Whatever feels comfortable for you is just a consistency of doing it. So if it's once a week, that's fine. As long as you do it once a week, every week, and you commit mm -hmm. to that for the next three months and then i've got six months and then keep going keep going right if it's twice a week again wherever you feel comfortable at the moment but i'll show a question if if i'm going to be doing two pieces of content a week around this can i do that for the next every week for the next three months hmm. so and that just comes point. into you book it into your calendar don't you you book it in yeah yeah, yeah block then the you time out your, it's a day week and then you've got time then for for, for planning, preparation, and then contact posting, obviously. But you're much better off being consistent with what you feel you're capable of doing in there. There's no right or wrong, right? There's no, you've got to do 16 posts a day if you want to do this, right? There's no right or wrong. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> um, if, you, if you're comfortable doing that and you can do that, you know, when you see these people doing that, they've got a big team behind them that are doing mm. it, so it's a lot easier. Um you know, I'm pushing out content more, but it's just a, where I'm at. And again, when using team members and automation to do that, um, and these calls, bumps are going out straight quickly. But whatever's comfortable with you. So if you feel you can commit to one piece of content a week for the next three months, then that's how often it is for you. Okay. If you feel you can do two pieces of content, post, you know, which might be a different type of one, one video, short video or one written post or one quote, and you can commit to that for every week for the next three months. Again, that's fine. If free, all of a sudden sounds scary, and I'm not sure I can commit to that for the next three months, every week for the next three months, then you you found your answer where, where, where that is. Mm. But it will be different for everyone and for you. Knowing you a little bit, <laughs> I think one or two, and stick to doing that every week. Yeah, okay. You try and be consistent when that goes out, so it becomes like a series. So like every Thursday at four o'clock, your new piece of content gets better. So people get familiar. Mm. So you can have this consistency of once a week and people get familiar with it and familiar and familiar with it. Mm. And you've got to remember a lot of people that would be who you want to attract, dare I say, slightly older generation, right? We're used to, do you remember like, we're not, we're used to the before binge watch, binge watching, mm -hmm. what you, could, what, you know, you had to wait a week before your next episode and you were yeah. like, and that was almost in your, you didn't have, you didn't put it in your diary, you didn't put it in your calendar, but it was like, right, you know, even for me, when I was younger, right, every Saturday, six o'clock, you know, the A team, you know, so you kind of, you mm -hmm. know, and you, and you look at people watching, being brought up, formed up, brought up with Coronation Street or EastEnders and stuff like that, you know, it was once or twice a week at the start, you know, and that was it. And it was just a regular series that people get committed to. So if you're, if it's once a week or twice a week, have a consistency of when, when it actually goes out as well okay i'll write that down brilliant cool we didn't stick to 20 minutes but um we're not far off <laughs> not far off close <laughs> brilliant thank you so my <laughs> my takeaways then so website just a basic landing page yeah either do a video uh 
and possibly a booking link or a simplified PDF for people. Um, and then put a start a like website budget savings plan, mm. put that into place, and then I'll start to understand also what I want it to do, the website. Uh, and then for the other one, which was about the uh, marketing, clarity around marketing, is to write down the five things uh, as a journey for the client. What does it look like um, on any of the steps? Yeah. Potentially could do that as a carousel in Instagram. Make sure that it doesn't say the how-to. It's just information content only. Why? Which is what people would be better for, uh, understanding as well. So it's better content for people to... Mm -hmm. And then to be consistent, so book a time. That is it. And be regular. You're really good at this note taking stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Awesome. Oh, brilliant. Thank you ever so much. I'll stop in there. And then you'll be able to, if you want to connect with Lou, you'll see her on the Facebook, particularly. It'll be um, Instagram, it'll be, you can see her profile. Um, if you're just YouTube, just reach out. And if you want your own 20 minute call ish, then <laughs> you'll see the link below. See you soon. Thanks, Lou. See you. Bye.